Hello and welcome to the latest update of the Sugarcane Rainfall Outlook for the Burdekin District. In this issue we will look into how the Access S model verified for rainfall over July before covering August rainfall today. We'll then look into short term weather watch points before seeing what the Access S and International Model Rainfall Outlooks have in store over the coming months. So how did the Bureau's Long Range Access S model perform over the month of July? On the left, we have the observed rainfall totals at the top, with most locations in the district recording between 50 and 70 millimetres for the month. And below that, we have the rainfall deciles, which show us how these totals compare to the July median rainfall. We can see plenty of those blue colours indicating above median rainfall across the region. On the right, Access S model rainfall outlook for July at the top, and the skill below that. Looking at the skill map, there's low to moderate skill across the Burdekin at this time of year with 50 to 65% accuracy in the past. And we can see that the forecast of low odds, 25 to 35% of exceeding the July median rainfall has verified very poorly, with most locations receiving two to three times the average July rainfall across the district. And that was primarily down to the upper rain band moving in from the west on the 3rd and 4th of July, delivering 30 to 50 millimetres through the region. And there are a couple of reasons behind the poor model performance. One is the higher than usual sea surface temperatures lingering in the Coral Sea, which models were expecting to cool during July, and that didn't eventuate. So there's been that extra moisture available from those warmer sea surface temperatures to the east. And models were also anticipating a positive IOD event would develop during July, which, if it had formed, would have suppressed the moisture available to that northwest cloud band at the start of the month. But the positive IOD also failed to eventuate during July. In fact, we're only starting to see signs that the positive IOD event is becoming established now at the end of August. August rainfall totals across the region are below average with most locations recording negligible rainfall with the highest total in the region right on the coastline with 6.2 millimeters at Alpha Beach. We can see from the red colors in the rainfall percentages that the rainfall is tracking below average though the mean and median rainfall for this region is very low at this time of year anyway. Looking ahead to the short term forecast now, and here we have the 7 day rainfall accumulations from 10pm Thursday the 1st of September to 10pm next Thursday the 7th. We're looking at two different models here, the European model on the left and the Australian short term Access G model on the right. And we can see good agreement between the models that very low rainfall totals of less than 1mm are expected across the Burdekin in the coming week. Here we have the Access S forecast chance of exceeding 25 millimetres of rainfall over a week starting from the 3rd of September on the left and the 10th of September on the right. These maps are updated daily with new model data and are available from the Bureau Climate Outlooks page with a number of rainfall thresholds to choose from that you can check in with daily to see how things are trending. So the modelling suggests for both weeks there's a less than 10% chance of receiving 25 millimetres or more. So what can we expect for the month of September as a whole? The Access S forecast puts the odds of exceeding the median rainfall at 35 to 45% for the month. The model skill is moderate at this time of year, having 55 to 65% accuracy in the past. This translates into an expectation we'll see monthly rainfall below the historical median for September, as we can see from the lower values between the forecast 50% chance of at least on the left, compared with the historical median values on the right. And breaking the likely rainfall down further for September, with the high chance on the left, the 75% chance of receiving, and the lower chance totals on the right, the 25% chance of receiving, to give us an idea for the potential rainfall spread for the month. And it's modest amounts, as we would expect in the middle of the dry, with rainfall likely to fall within that 0 to 10 millimetre range for the month. And for comparison, here we have international model rainfall outlooks for the month of September, with long range forecasts from the US, Italy, Germany, Canada, Europe, Japan, the UK and France. The colour scheme here is slightly different, representing tersiles, so the rainfall is partitioned into thirds, with rainfall amounts in the yellow and brown colours representing forecast rainfall in the lower third, so a drier forecast. White colours indicating rainfall in the middle tersile, close to the median, and the green and blue colours indicating rainfall forecast in the upper tersile, so wetter or above median rainfall. So there's a spread in the model outlooks for the region here, with most models forecasting rainfall amounts in the middle tersile, a couple falling in the lower tersile, and one model weekly in the upper tersile. And here is the consensus forecast of those models combined for September. So averaging the model outlooks from the previous page, which results in a neutral signal along the Queensland coast, suggesting the most likely outcome for September is near median rainfall. If we mapped the Access S outlook of 35 to 45% chance of exceeding the median for September, that would also fall into the middle tersile on these maps. So this is reinforcing that. And to finish, a look into the long-term rainfall forecast for the three months from October to December. 
The model skill is high for this period with accuracy of 65 to 75% in the past, so we have elevated confidence in this outlook, and the forecast is for a low chance, 30% or less, of exceeding the median rainfall across October to December. And looking at the international model outlooks for the same time period, we can see that the dry signal is present across most models, with a couple leaning towards neutral odds, and that collaborates with what we are seeing in the access outlook as well. And that dry signal is correlated when we look at the international model consensus, with those yellow colours showing us that the rainfall for those months is likely to be in the lower tercile. That's it for this update. As always, check the latest forecasts and warnings on the Bureau's website or the BOM Weather app. And please send any feedback through to agriculture at bomb.gov.au or complete the survey using the QR code. We'd love to hear from you about ways we might improve the service. See you next Outlook. Thanks for listening.